Hello friends, Sarah Gaston here. Welcome to another Wednesday, 1 p.m. Central Standard Time, Facebook Live with yours truly. Uh, I, I don't know if you can tell, I put on a little bit of an outfit today. Why did I do this, you may ask? I'm probably not going to go anywhere except maybe to dinner later on. But you know what? We choose our circumstances. And today, the circumstances I chose were that I wanted to like Put on some jewelry for my Facebook Live. Um, and you know what? I even put on perfume, and probably the only people who will smell it are rabbits, which they're not people, but you get my drift. Anyway, um, but you know what? We have a choice every day about how we're going to approach what we're dealing with, and that is my approach today. Anyway, so I'm here every week, of course, to answer your questions about the business and the art of acting. And I really got to turn off my notifications. Anyway, that's fine. Um, so anyway, <clears throat> if you have questions, please put them in the comments uh, section below this video. I, uh, as usual, am going to be filming on my phone because I get a better, just, I get better, um, a better connection, but I will be checking my computer for your questions. So uh, I want to open up today, though, talking about socks. You may ask yourself, uh, where is my beautiful house? Where is my beautiful wife? And the days go by. Get it? Talking heads. Anyway, uh, what do socks have to do with acting? Well, I brought some socks here for you. And um, the reason is because I was working with a student recently and I gave this student um, an exercise to try. And it's something that I use a lot when I'm working one on one with somebody when they are getting sort of stuck in a certain way of performing, in particular a monologue. You can use this for anything, but today I'm just gonna talk about it in terms of working on a monologue. So what tends to happen when we're working on a piece is that we get sort of stuck in what I call speechifying, which means rather than having a conversation, which is what a monologue is, it's a conversation with another person, it's just you're doing the bulk of the speaking, Hi, I'm doing a monologue right now. Um, so rather than doing that, um, people get up and they, they speechify. They, they get up and they give a speech and they talk at their auditors, okay? And that doesn't create any sort of realism. It doesn't create any sort of human connection. And part of the reason is um, we, monologues are just an artificial construct, right? So what I try to do when I'm working with people is help them create um, kind of just a, a natural human experience while they're having the conversation, okay? And so the particular exercise I gave my student yesterday was, he's very organized, so he, um, he had all his socks bundled up and, you know, mated like I, I have these. And so I had him pull them apart and mismatch them deliberately. And what that does is it, distracts you from speechifying, all right? That's not a real word, but it's the word that I made up and I find it to be the most effective way to describe this phenomenon. And so I'm going to give you an example. I will illustrate this for you today. So say I'm doing a monologue for you and uh, I'm going, um, let's go something like this. When I got there, it was just such an overwhelming amount of blood and we try to wear protective gloves, but we had a really cheap sheriff at the time and he bought us shit gloves and you put them on and you put them on and you, you kept breaking. And so finally, you know, you just run out of gloves. All right, I'm just speechifying, right? I'm not connecting with anyone. I'm not talking with anybody. I've developed some sort of rote way of delivering these words without even thinking about them. This is the tricky thing about doing something like a monologue in particular, but really memorizing all lines, is you have to memorize them. You have to know what you're going to say, but then you have to think the thoughts while you're saying them so that you breathe life into them. So here's what happens if I give myself this very odd task of pulling apart my socks and mismatching them. Uh, when I got there, it was, uh, it was just such an overwhelming amount of blood and uh, we try to wear gloves, but we <laughs> had this really cheap sheriff at the time and he bought us shit gloves and they kept breaking. And you know, you think, well, you know, don't hesitate. 
you know, that's what your mind tells you all the time. Don't hesitate. And so you just keep moving and you try to help Matthew and you find an airway and that's, that's just what you do. Okay, great. So now I have a bunch of mismatched socks, so I've got some organizing to do later. But hopefully you could see in the second take, um, it wasn't like, wow, that was so stellar. Let me, you know, give her an Oscar right now, right? But it broke up that sort of, let me just kind of regurgitate the words without any connection, right? And even by distracting myself a little bit with the socks, it gave me an opportunity to figure out what points I wanted to make and what words I wanted to emphasize and what I really wanted to get across to the listener. So anyway, um, I, you know, I always joke with students that my house is never cleaner than when I have to learn lines because I will do really uh, mindless things like scrubbing toilets or mopping the floors or intricate dusting, can't stand dusting. And, um, but that will take my mind off, you know, just kind of saying the lines in this kind of bland rote fashion. And so I like to learn lines while I'm doing an activity and I'll just say one line over and over, you know, at least five different ways. And then I'll go on to the next line and then I'll start to string them together like pearls in a necklace. And that helps me from the get go learn lines in a way that it, it never really calcifies. So I have found that extraordinarily helpful. So I hope you do too. Anyway, I'm going to look down here see what questions we have. Yay, Mike! I love that you love them. I thank you so much for being here. Uh, let's see. Can you talk about improvised auditions, especially when taping from home without a scene partner or any direction? Absolutely. That's such a fantastic question. Um, and, you know, this has actually been on my mind recently because I've gotten three... Uh, um, what am I trying to say? I've gotten three auditions this week that all had some element of improv. And, you know, when you're in the room, um, you have the casting director sort of guiding you. And when you're at home alone in your living room with your camera and maybe somebody on remote, you know, I had somebody help me last night via Zoom, <laughs> you know, they're like my scene partner kind of in the background. Um, it's, it's a little difficult to kind of make sense of the directions. But what you want to do, for example, um, I had this audition yesterday and there was a script and then there was a second scenario and my character didn't have any words, but they were proposing to someone. And um, so they're like, okay, improvise, you know, stick to close to the script in the first part, but improvise the proposal in the second part, right? So, you know, I basically created an eye line as if I was getting down on one knee and I came up with three different things that I might say if I were to be proposing marriage to someone, right? Um, and really what great improv always, always entails, whether it's for a commercial or like if you're some genius, you know, in Second City or Groundlings or UCB, um, uh, yeah, UBC, no, UCB, sorry, Upright Citizens Brigade, um, is that you're in, you're in the scene, okay? So for this thing that I did last night where uh, I was proposing to someone, you know, I had to sit there and imagine seeing someone's face that I loved and imagine how nervous I would feel and imagine um, how it was possibly the one of the greatest moments, hopefully it was one of the greatest moments of my life, if not the greatest moment of my life, and then how I would feel when they said yes, right? But you have to use your imagination to create all that, right? Because there's not a casting director standing by to kind of talk you through it, right? Um, and I didn't have anybody in my eye line. Um, I, I was looking up at a nail um, that I should probably pull out of the wall because it doesn't serve a purpose. <laughs> more um don't judge me and uh, i have organized socks anyway so that's you know something that you could do um you know i have another one that i got to turn in today and it's all improv and it's basically i'm at the dentist and i'm trying to talk to the hygienist or the dentist while you know that mouth spreader is in my mouth and i kind of got i'm gonna have to talk like this like oh yeah i really i uh, i really like those too you know or whatever 
Um, but again, you just have to put yourself in state. You have to sit there and think, okay, what kind of conversations do I have with my hygienist? You know, uh, my hygienist, we always talk about animals because we both love animals and she always asks about how the rabbits are and she always talks about all the strays that she's picked up and found homes for. So we have those conversations while there's some apparatus in my mouth. So don't be intimidated by improv um, auditions, especially if you have to do them at home, but create a little create a little scene for yourself, right? It's no different than playing pretend when you're a little kid. And if you can take the anxiety um, of getting it right out of the formula, you can just have fun. You can just have fun, right? The other thing I want to say about auditions right now, and I had, I've had this conversation with a few students in private lessons, and uh, I had this conversation with my regular Tuesday night ongoing class last night. Um, because we're in this weird artificial situation with COVID-19 and we um, aren't in the room, you know, we're, we're having to audition either over a tape or um, I haven't done this yet, but uh, Actors Access has started EcoCast Live to where you can have a Zoom, you know, audition with people. I've had Zoom callbacks before, so I'm familiar with that, but um, it's artificial. It lacks the excitement and the buzz and the charge that you get when you're in the room. There's just, a, there's just an energy, right? So my concern is that we as actors um, will be putting in these auditions that are kind of like, brr, you know, we've got this kind of energy because we lack the buzz of being in the room. And my suggestion to you, my, my, encourage, my encouraging words for you are, um, generate that buzz for yourself, you know? We're creative, generative beings and give yourself that charge, right? So that when you are turning in an audition, even if it's taped at home, it's gonna have that same level of energy and that kind of electricity as if you were in the room. And I guarantee you, it's gonna give you an edge because a lot of people have pandemic fatigue. Um, they're, a lot of people are feeling like, what's the point? Why am I even auditioning? You know, I can't go out. I don't even know, you know, are, are, is it going to be safe on set? You know, it's really easy to get in that mindset. I may have to turn this job down if I don't like the conditions on set, or I may show up to set and I may have to walk away. I know people who have done that, right? So, um, so it's really easy to get in this mindset of what's the point. I'm going to kind of phone it in, right? Don't do that to yourself, right? Still give the best audition that you can give one for your personal sense of integrity and artistry, even if it's a silly commercial, and two, because you want to keep that muscle strong, right? Because when things do start to open back up, you're going to have kept yourself fit, so to speak, and the other people who maybe have spent the last six months or 12 months going, oh, what's the point, are going to be a little flabby, metaphorically speaking. Make sense? I hope so, because it makes sense to me. All right, I want to see if there are more questions. Hello, Epic, oh my gosh, Epic, boy, from my old Actors Theater day. So nice to see you here. Joseph Jones, great to see you here. I want to see if there are any more questions. Oh, I have to refresh, don't I? It's a little confusing to do it, um, to do it on my phone and on my computer at the same time. I don't see any more questions, okay. Uh, I am going to give you guys a few more seconds. Going once, going twice. Okay, I guess we don't have any more questions. And that's cool because I don't want to take up your time. Time is a valuable non-renewable resource. And so I want to keep this short and sweet if that's all you got for me today. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you found this helpful and you want to share with your friends, that's fantastic. I also have a YouTube channel where I do specific videos about specific acting topics that uh, are really informative. And also you can go to my website, saragastonnoh.com and sign up for my email list because there are things I share on my email list that I don't share anywhere else. And you can also find out about classes and workshops webinars, private coaching, all the things that I offer if you want to work with me personally. Uh, I love acting so much 
and I love doing it and I love sharing it with others and I love to share what I've learned and I'm always learning so I want to share that with you anyway have a lovely day and uh, stay safe my friends okay bye